Welcome to this Google Apps screencast where I'm going to show teachers how to make a Google group email list for your classes. It's a great way to organize your students all into one group. So I'm in the Google Groups tool. This is accessible from the black bar up at the top. So I went to Groups. And when working in the Groups area, you just go up here to Create Group. When you get into the Create Group area, you should see um, first, just make sure that you have Franklin choices. This is for Franklin staff that we're, we're showing this screencast, we're creating the screencast. Make sure you have Franklin choices over here. If you don't, uh, try to go back to Groups. Uh, make sure you do see the Franklin choices here and that you're signed in with your Franklin credentials. For creating the group name, please start this with the two letters of your building. So I'll put FP. If you're working at the high school, you can put HS or any of the elementaries, use your two letters. And that's just so when all these groups are piled together in one place, we know what, what building it's for and, and who to follow up with if we have questions. After the building, please put a dash, then put the teacher name. So I'll put my name. Then put a dash and put the name of the class. So I'm gonna call this New Media 8th Grade. And you can make this as long or as short as you want it to be. Notice I did squish all this together. Usually when we create Google Docs or Google Files, we do say leave spaces between. Because this is actually making an email address, you do have to have everything touching together. So that's why we put the dashes in there just to kind of separate. So the group name is created. You'll notice the group email address was also created as well. So you can alter these if you need to before we fully create the group. When making a group list for your classes or for Franklin, please make sure that you change this drop down to say franklinpublicschools.org. Any groups we make, we're going to make franklinpublicschools.org just so in the system we know what's what's a group and what's an actual email address. For group description, I'm going to put this is Mr. Kafka's eighth grade new media class. And working down, English I'll leave as the primary language. Group type, the default is email list. There are other choices here. Please, for this example, we're just doing an email list. Uh, there are some other great features of Google Groups, and we'll, we'll show you those later where needed. Working down, basic permissions. This, this has to be very specific. And we also have a handout that has screenshots of this in case you need that uh, to look at while doing this. But for view topics, I'm going to click on this drop down. And we only want the people that can view the topics to be the mem uh, managers of the group and all members of the group. So we're going to uncheck this third choice, all organization members. So yours should look like this. When done setting your check marks, you can click out of the window and those choices do, do save. For post, we want to only have owners of the group avail uh, ability to post and managers of the group to have the ability to post. So I'm going to uncheck these two. And I'm going to click out of there when I'm done. For join the group, we want to set this so that only the teacher can invite users to this group. So we're going to do only invited users, and again, click either when you're done. If you did all these choices the same as I did here, you can come up and click create, and your group will get created. You'll get a security message to type the words as best you can. Do your best to decipher that. And if you don't get it right, you'll just be prompted with another one. And that's just so that groups can't be created for spamming purposes. So if all looks good and all gets created, you'll, you'll see congratulations, your group has been created. Your next step is to invite people to join the group. So I'm going to go ahead and invite people to join the group. When you're editing the group, and you can always come back in and take members out or put new members in, um, this is what the edit or the manage area looks like. So I'm going to show some different tricks for setting this up. Over here, starting on the left side under members, you want to direct add members for this as a class email list. So make sure you choose direct add members. Here in the email address to the members, uh, you could start typing students' names and you know clicking on them so that they auto add. What I would suggest is make a spreadsheet of your students. I'm going to click over to the spreadsheet that I have here. If you have a spreadsheet of your students with, you know, first name, last name as a column, Google email address as a column, maybe homeroom teacher or grade or house, there's a lot of things you can do by just being able to copy and paste those email addresses very quickly. So I'm going to copy these students here, come back over to my group, 
and make sure I'm clicked in the invite area and I'm going to paste. So I could, you know, in just a few clicks automatically make the group of my students. The reason I say make a spreadsheet, take a little time to make a spreadsheet is there's a lot of other things you can do in Google where you, you want to be able to do that very quickly, copy and paste uh, students' email addresses. So um, I definitely recommend taking some time to do that. So I've got my students in here. I'm just going to put two in for this demo. For welcome message, I'm going to leave this blank because I'm direct adding my students. I don't want them to receive a welcome message. They don't need to know they're part of this group. Uh, it's just for purposes of me to easily share and email my students. Working down email subscription options, make sure this is set to all email. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I click add. And when you click add, it'll tell you how many members were added to the group. I can click show. It'll show me those names as well. I'm going to click done. Now when you come back to work on your groups, you'll see the group listed as one of the groups you've created. And this is what the, the area looks like. To be able to get back in and edit or manage that area, there is a manage button located up here with all your other menu choices. So I'm going to go to manage and this is going to show me the students that are added. And this is also where I could go in and, and tweak some other settings. And there are two other things that you do need to do before completing this, this making of the group. Go to the settings over here on the left side. And under moderation, when you're clicked on moderation, it should be red. This is very important. You have to set this third choice here on the moderation page, spam messages. You have to set this to skip the moderation queue and post to the group. What this is doing is making it so that any message you send automatically does go to your students. Uh, this is just sometimes, you know, group messages might be seen as spam by different email services. If you choose skip the moderation queue and post to the group, this will help prevent that from happening, help prevent blocking any messages that you send. So you're going to hit save so that that effect uh, stays locked in. And the last thing you have to set is scrolling down here in this left side window, go down to information and again I'm clicking these little arrows to expand and see other sub menus here. And for directory, if I click on directory so it's red, if you don't want this group to show up in the directory, meaning so that students don't see it, other staff don't see it, this is purely for you to use, uncheck this box. And if this is a class list, I would recommend that you uncheck that box and then hit save. This just makes it so if somebody starts typing FP or Kafka, they don't, they don't accidentally send a message to the group, they don't accidentally share something to the group. So the group is now created. What's nice about this is you can start using the group right away. However, the group won't, as you type, if you go to type someone's, uh, if you go to type this group's email address, it won't auto show for about 24 hours. But if you're ready to go, ready to share things, you can copy the group. So I'm going to copy the name of the group and let's pretend I was going to send an email message to my students here. I could come over here and I could put in the name of the group at franklinpublicschools.org. And if I wanted to send a message, that message would go to everyone that's included in that group. Uh, also great for sharing files to your group. So you can make a folder and share files, share a folder of files to your students very quickly. And I'll show you that in another screencast. That does it for making a group. Thanks for watching.